A possible tornado was spotted in Centennial and Highlands Ranch. This was a shot of what it looked like. A viewer, Abby, took this picture for us, and this is over a golf course in Centennial. Yeah, some pretty ominous views around the metro area. Meteorologist Corey Reppenhagen has been driving in the worst parts of this storm all afternoon. This is the live view from his car right now, although he's seen much worse. There are some damage reports kind of all over the place, specifically to the south that we're working to get to, but we did want to show you pictures of trees that came down in Highlands Ranch, one of them covering a car. The hail covering the ground in some areas looks like snow again. This is in Lone Tree. You can see how slowly that traffic is moving. There's a lot of rain, a lot of hail, and uh, folks showing us what size it is in that spot. As we move to Castle Rock, the rain and hail turned a street into a river. There's so much saturation on the ground. It's like, where does the water go? And it's all come too fast for drains to keep up with. People in the Morrison area once again had to take cover after hail rain down this afternoon. The hailstones were huge. We're talking golf ball sized, even baseball sized hail we've seen. And one of our crews back out at Red Rocks following up on the event of last night and that storm got caught in the hail again this afternoon. They had to rush to take cover and the hail smashed their windshield at least in a couple of spots. So they're not driving home or getting them a new vehicle. You can see the size of that hail to cause that kind of damage. We're not done. We can go to Ken Carroll. They really got hit as well. The hail coming down hard and they saw a lot of wind picking up trees in that area too. Oh, Kathy, where are we going Ooh, now? Where's the worst of it at this point? I know, you know, it started earlier today, you guys in the Front Range Foothill areas around 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. So the worst of it is crossed the I-25 corridor and is now a concern east of us. But now we have a concern for some of the outflow boundaries to set off another line yet tonight. So National Weather Service has Denver under a severe thunderstorm watch for 9 o'clock just because of that possibility. Outside we go in the evening drive now. People are starting to move a little bit on I-25. A little bit of sunshine outside. We're seeing a little bit of a break in the cloud cover out there and just kind of looking at some of the cameras around Boulder. We're starting to see a little bit of that cloud cover. Looks like maybe a few showers possibly coming into that area after a severe storm brought rain and hail to that uh, part of our state. And now in downtown Denver, we've gone from partly sunny to mostly cloudy again. And the storms that are coming off the foothills have been slowly moving and dropping anywhere from one to two inch diameter diameter hail as they've been tracking toward the east and southeast. This large blue box that you see is a severe thunderstorm watch, which uncovers and just in, well, I don't know, it, it sort of covers Colorado Springs now all the way up into southeastern Wyoming. They've added portions of Nebraska to this as well. Severe thunderstorm watch out through 9 o'clock, and this will cover areas from Fort Collins to Denver, down to Colorado Springs, up to Castle Rock. The yellow polygons that you're seeing on the screen there are severe thunderstorm warnings. Storms are tracking toward the east and southeast. This new thunderstorm warning is for a cell just outside of the Larkspur area, and that cell is moving toward toward the east, but is capable of producing golf ball size hail. Northwestern Elbert County extending north of Kiowa just to the south of the Byers area is kind of our focus. These storms developed in the Evergreen area around 1:30 today, dropping one to two inch diameter hail, a similar path to what we saw last night, crossing Douglas County and then also bringing that torrential rain onto saturated soils. As Alex mentioned, uh, there has been at least one tornado reported this in Northwestern Highlands Ranch and that line of storms now has tracked to the east where hail and heavy rain have created some flooding concerns um, and we're getting the storm reports in from Highlands Ranch back up into the Lakewood out toward Aurora Centennial and Parker. The hailstones have been golf ball size, tennis ball size uh, with that uh, tornado touching down in the Highlands Ranch area this afternoon. We've had a lot of tree damage, trees down on roadways. Roads have been flooded, rivers of water and hail coming down I-25. Um, we started with Broadway and C-470, Wildcat Parkway, and then at Ridgegate and I-25 southbound. Uh, traffic was just at a standstill. The biggest hail now north of Black Forest into Kiowa and Elizabeth. Reports from our Corey Reppenhagen on the ground in Elizabeth is the hail is three to four inches deep in and around the Elizabeth area. So uh, Kim and Alex, the severe threat over for Denver for now, but possibly not for the entire evening. Uh, so I'll have more for you in just a few minutes.
Okay, we'll talk to you soon, Kathy. We've been talking about the fact Douglas County, Highlands Ranch specifically, really hit hard by this storm. Probably a couple hours ago was maybe the worst of it. Maybe an hour and a half ago when people really felt the weight of it and the winds and everything else connected to it. Yep, and we've been getting a lot of pictures of that damage. And finally, uh, our Kelly Rinky has been there. We want to catch up with her. What have you been seeing in that area? We know South Fire Rescue is just inundated with calls right now. Yeah, and we've been seeing a lot of their fire trucks that are passing through this area. We just got into Highlands Ranch about 20 minutes ago, and this is what a lot of the streets are looking like. This is on um, Highlands Park Highway, and this is a gentleman who is picking up some of the debris. He almost looks like he owns a property that is just on the other side of this fence line. They just wrapped up cleaning up this massive tree that fell onto the street. It's a three lane road on this side, and it's only been uh, one lane since we have been here. Guys, just to give you an idea, of how strong and powerful these winds are. What is in this uh, road right now is actually one of those um, street lights, those overhang lights, um, and that fell on uh, on the road along with the tree. And it looks like this tree actually came from a backyard um, from a house that is on the other side of this fence. Um, Highlands Ranch Metro District crews were out here with this gentleman with their chainsaws. Um, took at least when we were here for 10 minutes, um, took them uh, that amount of time to clear out this. Road, but it looks like they are kind of wrapping up that process. But um, since we have been here, this is really most of the scene that we have been seeing, most of the types of damage that we've been seeing. A lot of these huge, huge trees that have fallen over. And we've been hearing reports from neighbors um, in Highlands Ranch. That is most of the damage that they've been seeing in their neighborhoods. Um, of the, some of the addresses of the damage that we've been hearing about is just east of us. Um, so in a couple minutes, we're planning on going over there to see how some of the homeowners are um, hanging in there after this really scary storm, guys. Look at that, and they're down to one lane there, and you know that's been going on for a while. Yep, and I'm sure there's so much more to see. In fact, we want to give you another look at Highlands Ranch. That's where our Chris Bianchi is. Uh, also some, well, we can see some huge trees behind you down there. That's right, Kim. Yeah, I'm here in Cougar Run Park in Highlands Ranch. This would be right near uh, University as well as a C470, and we've got some pretty big trees that are down here. and We've got a whole string of them. This tree to me looks like it's about 20 25 feet tall but it's of course not the only tree that's down in this whole area I got some bystanders here but also some of these trees again 20 25 feet tall and maybe an interesting component of this is you might notice how these trees are all down in the same direction uh, that is something that we typically see with straight line wind damage but when the when the weather national weather service comes out to assess some of this damage they're going to assess whether there was a twisting motion with some of this damage to assess whether or not a tornado took place. But these trees all basically down in the same direction. Now, in terms of some of the damage, again, you can see here at Cougar Run Park, lots and lots of trees down on our walk over here. We saw several of these trees uh, down as well. But what we're hearing from some of the bystanders and some of the area uh, people here in the area is that there's been quite a bit in the way of some home damage as well, a little bit behind me and behind uh, kind of this little hill that you're seeing here behind me. So again, a fair bit in the way of damage so far. At this point, it looks like some of these kind of small to medium sized trees down, but it looks like some maybe larger trees down uh, off in that direction. And we're going to go see maybe some of the homes and some of the uh, larger trees that came down. But at this point, it looks like some uh, pretty substantial damage down here in Cougar Run Park in Highlands Ranch. That is jaw dropping. I don't know if I've ever seen anything like to that. To see what every single tree right. like that. Uh, Chris, that really illustrates, as he said, it, it, there, it's going to be something they'll study in time about maybe some swirling motion with the wind and, and how this tornadic activity took down all those trees. Just incredible to see. And our crews in Highlands Ranch are just now really getting on the ground and getting out in neighborhoods. So they'll be bringing us much more mm -hmm. as we continue our coverage. Uh, we're only hours from our last storm. There was a lot of flooding and sadly, a woman could not be saved from floodwaters last night. Her car got swept off the road about 20 miles east of Denver. Rescue crews discovered it far off the road, just south of Watkins, a few hours after sunrise this morning. Jeremy Hohola joins us live with more on this terrible death. Jeremy. Yeah, we'll talk about that terrible, sad story here in just a minute, but we want to give you an idea of what we're seeing now. You've heard about the calm before the storm. Now we're in the middle of the calm after the storm. We're standing right in the middle of the Cherry Creek uh, State Park here, and we have a nice 180 degree view of this corner of the front range from the DTC to uh, parts of Aurora to parts of Denver. And we can see 
The storms are really starting to break up here where we are, but as we start to pan towards the east here, we see the edge of that big gray monster that caused all sorts of uh, wet weather here in this area, in this corner of the metro area. This is part of that storm that we see as a big red blob on our radar. Uh, this is reminiscent of the rains that happened about 20 miles east of Denver last night in the town of Watkins. And then this morning, as you were talking about that, a family did receive some devastating news. Torrential rains turning roads into rivers south of Watkins Wednesday night. The roads were just flooded and washed out. Look over, there's a tire floating down the road. I ended up seeing uh, bales of hay. Eric Lapp captured this cell phone footage as he went to check on animals at his ranch. And I've been out here six, seven years, and I've never, ever seen weather like this. The water was so intense, it pushed cars off the road in this region, prompting fire rescue. The fire department said it saved two people who got trapped by the flooding. But come morning, well, with assistance of uh, South Metro, their dive team and the use of their drone, we were able to locate the, in just the top of that vehicle 400 yards or so down the roadway. They learned water pushed a third car hundreds of yards off the road. The driver did not survive. A South Metro dive team with our assistance uh, was able to unfortunately recover a an adult female victim and then that was pretty much it where we're at. Yeah, very devastating news for that family. Let's hope they're doing OK and they can find strength in her memory. In the meantime, officials have yet to identify her, uh, but we'll see uh, if we can get more information about that in the days ahead. In the meantime, here in the Cherry Creek State Park, we can start to see a rainbow in this area. I'm not sure if you can see it on your screen, but you can see the slight uh, image of a rainbow behind us. So as this big cell moves out of the metro area, we see what it leaves behind. Back yeah. to you guys. We can see that rainbow. Thank you, Jeremy. You really did give us a great 360 degree view of what's happening, what people have seen all around the metro area and around the state today. Thank you.